Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Over and over and over and over again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you for your presence, Lord. We thank you. Hallelujah. Mm. I'm learning on the prayer line. You don't rush God when he's doing something. Just let him have his way. God is good. Do we have any visitors with us today? We have any visitors with us? Well, we thank God for each and every one of you that has came out today to give God the praise and the glory which is due his name. And we just thank God for being here and just thank God for his spirit that's in this place today. We thank God for continuing to just bless us over and over and over again. Here are the announcements for today, um, July 2nd. Sunday school, Sunday school, Sunday school is back in the house. So we want to praise God on July the 9th. We can all come out. The adults can all come out and praise God with Sunday school. Um, it will be starting at 9 o'clock. And again, that's next Sunday, July 9th. We have the gospel play um, it's called Depart From Me. It will be playing at the Whitehall Yearling High School Auditorium at 6 p.m. on Saturday, July 15th. And our own sister Beverly Carter will be playing in that play. So if you can go out and support her, that will be great. The play is called Depart From Me. The women's ministry will have a planning session Saturday, July 15th at the Tat Restaurant is on 1210 South James Road. It will be from 11.30 to 2 p.m. You must reservation, uh, put in your reservations with Sister Rose Handen. Again, that's on July 12th. Her number is 614-868-9086. And remember, you do have to RSVP for that. Thank you. All right, and also the Vacation Bible School is back at Rehope of Temple. We want to thank God for all of those who have put that together, so we want to be sure to support them. The day would be the days will be July 31st through August 4th. This is the adult classes will be in the sanctuary, and the youth class will be in the fellowship hall. There will be dinner served after each class, and then they'll have their famous spaghetti dinner on that Friday. Uh, if you have any more questions about that, please see Sister Leslie Washington. And we are back. Elder Parks will have his Take It to the City Explore Gospel Fest, which will be Saturday, August 12th at 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. It will be located at the Mount Vernon Plaza Vocal Point. Uh, it will be good food, as always, good preaching and good fun. And if you've ordered your T-shirts, please see Elder Parks for that. He do have them available right now. In our own, we'd like to welcome Apostle Moncrief is in the house today. We thank God so much for him. Thank God for taking care of him and just being with him. We had a chance to come have a conversation. I seen him in Walmart one day. So I just thank God that uh, he's been blessing him. But he will be playing with the band Sensation downtown on tomorrow, July 3rd. It will be the uh, red, white, and boom that we have every year downtown. So if you could, please support him. It'll be at 1 o'clock, and it's sure to be a lot of fun and a lot of food. Just be safe and have fun. Uh, this note here says there's a car with running lights. It's a Nissan Sentra JTV4684. It's a Nissan Sentra. Again, it's JTV4684. And that's all I have for you today. And we will have our offering. Praise God.
Praise the Lord, everybody. It's offering time. I said it's offering time. This is another opportunity for God's blessing plan. God continue to bless us over and over and over and over and over and over. Glory to God and this opportunity to be blessed, blessed again. The Bible says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, pour you out a blessing, that there should not be room enough to receive it. He says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. God is a great God, and he's greatly to be pra praised. Anybody need an offering, just raise your hand. And if you already have them, please stand with me. We also have our people in the back with our Clover credit. You can give on Cash App. I'll give LaFi. Let us look to the Lord. Gracious God, our Father, in the precious and wonderful name of Jesus Christ, so grateful and so thankful for the privilege and an opportunity to give back a portion of that which you so graciously given to us, not grudgingly or out of necessity, because we know, Lord, that you love a cheerful giver. Bless those that have and remember those that have not, that they may have at the next appointed time for the upbuilding of your kingdom. We give you all the praise, we give you all the honor, we give you all the glory in that wonderful name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for your liberality, for all your tithers. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Follow the direction of your ushers.
asked me to drive. I wonder why he asked me to drive. He wasn't teaching. But I said, I can. And so I was trying to make it here to the Sunday rehearsal, but I didn't quite make it. But I saw something in the road, and I didn't know. It looked small, so I just said, I'll probably, the car will miss it if I run over it. But it didn't. <laughs> I was going pretty fast and uh, made a loud noise. Boom. It was metal. <laughs> My husband kind of got quiet then. I thought, he probably won't let me drive no more. <laughs> I said, oh, I thought it was small. <laughs> Just said, bam! I kept on rolling. <laughs> and I said, I got to get to the church. But I thank the Lord. It, it, nothing happened. I didn't see any gas leaking out or anything. So the Lord brought us safely on. Amen. But he didn't have to do it, somebody said, but he did it. <laughs> so I just want to, that's why I can't stop praising him. He's always doing things over and over and over and over. And I don't want to get spoiled because I know there's some things we got to go through as Christians. But uh, the Lord sure is there. When he's most needed, he's there. Faithful. Amen. I can't say otherwise. That's the way he works. And I just praise him for that. So he keeps on doing great things. Little and big. But they're all great to me. So this song says he keeps on, he keeps on continuously, all the time, good and bad times, he keeps on. So keep your hand in his hand, he keeps on doing great things for you and for me. He keeps on doing great things for me. Glory, hallelujah. Keeps on doing great things for me. Oh, and if I if I had ten thousand tongues, I wouldn't praise his holy name.
great things, great things, angels all around. He keeps on. for me. I th I'm sure each and every one of us can give that testimony that God keeps doing great things for me. I thank and praise God for his goodness this morning. Give honor to God himself who's the maker and creator of all things. I give honor to Pastor Barry and Lady Barry uh, and them giving me this opportunity to speak this morning. I give honor to uh, the clergy and, and all of the uh, deacons and the missionary and all the saints here this morning. I uh, give honor to my uh, daughters. I don't, I don't see, uh, yeah, I see Camille and Wayne uh, and uh, Sherry uh, and all of the grandchildren. I uh, give honor to them. And lastly, uh, and most importantly, I give honor to my lovely wife, Lady Katrina Jackson. Uh, right on. <laughs> So we just thank and praise God for his goodness and mercy. You know, I, I'm thinking about a lot of things this morning. I heard the other day that the, the Supreme Court uh, ruled against affirmative action. You know, a, a lot of people uh, that were affected in a positive way. You know, I would even think Clarence Thomas, who voted against it, was, if we didn't have that, he wouldn't be where he's at. So people, Tim Scott down in uh, South Carolina, he's a senator. It's only a few black senators. He was a, he's there because of affirmative action. So I, you know, so I'm praying, ask you to pray with me, that God will bless. I'm not so much going to be affected because of my age, but the young people coming along, they will be affected because they may not be able to go to Harvard uh, because under the affirmative action, uh, you got all white people, and you, you got to uh, go along with the makeup. You got 11% uh, in your community. You're going to have to allow 11% to come go to Harvard or wherever it is. And now, if they choose, they don't have to let anybody come in. They go back to racism. So, so pray that we uh, uh, that God will reverse first the effects of it or possible effects. I also want to thank uh, the uh, Sister Darlene and Sister Debbie Smith uh, and Sister Patrice and uh, Deacon Robert Jackson uh, for honoring me last week, although I was uh, out of town. Uh, you know, we uh, uh, got a bachelor. I already had two bachelor's degrees, and now this is one in religious studies, you know, and so I never had that. And, um, and I thought I was all done and found out after I graduated that I got to take another class and I'm taking it now. So, <laughs> so just sometimes you think you're done, you're not. 
So we just thank and praise God for that. And so I give honor to uh, the ones' names I call for uh, honoring the graduates. I, I looked at the high school graduates, such a wonderful thing for them to, uh, to reach that goal and now to go on to college. And then when they get out, they'll be able to start at a higher level and be able to provide for their families, for themselves, and able to contribute and give back to people less fortunate. Isn't that a blessing to be able to do that? God blesses us to bless us, but also for us to bless others. So I, I, I thank and praise God for that. And we don't know what contribution God uh, is going to allow them to contribute to the earth, the world. And so we just thank and praise God and we pray for them. At this time, let's look unto the Lord. Lord Jesus, we come to the author and the finisher of our faith. We acknowledge you. We thank you. Father, as we take a few minutes out this morning, we ask that you'll come in and sup with us. Feed us, Lord, until we want no more. And Lord Jesus, we thank you for your blessings. We're praying, Father, for those that are uh, hurting in some way physically, uh, or in, in some way in ailment, we're praying that you'd heal them. And Lord, I pray a special prayer for the sin-sick soul that don't know you, Lord. We're praying that they will be effective in a positive way uh, this morning. Father, we pray that you will draw them to you, that they will be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. This morning, I want to look at a scripture and it's uh, a scripture I think we all have read and we all know about. We're going back to Genesis, right. to the beginning. Uh, and I'm going to look at Genesis, the first chapter, and be reading from verses 26 to 31. Short passage, scripture. Genesis, the first chapter, verses 26 to 31. And I'll be reading from the King James Version, and they may have it up on the screen in a few minutes, and same version, so you can follow along with me. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth and subdue it. And it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over everything that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every herb for meat, and it shall be so, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Out of this, I would like to just address uh, just cursory a subject called the true image of God. The true image of God. And I enjoyed that song so much. I, I know they've sat down, but uh, I tell you, he always keeps doing something good for me. I, I wish they was able to sing another verse of that song. Uh, he keeps always, he's always doing something good for me. And uh, why? Because we were made in his image. We're his sons and daughters. He loves us. He desires to have fellowship with us. Yeah. 
So God created all things, first uh, beginning with the heaven and the earth. Next he said, let there be light. And he divided the darkness from the light. And God continued and divided the waters from the waters in the firmament. And he called it heaven. And the waters below the heaven, he caused it to be gathered and the dry land to appear. And he called it earth. I'm just continuing. I'm really uh, referring to the scriptures here. So I'm staying in the word for a little bit. God said that the earth bring forth grass. The herb yielding seed, the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed will be in itself. Next, God calls the sun to rule the earth by day and the moon and the stars to rule by night. God calls the waters to bring forth creatures abundantly that move and also great wells. The birds and every winged fowl came forth after his kind to be able to fly in the heavens. The beasts and every kind of animal came forth to be able to move upon the earth. Then God created man in his own image. Afterward, God rested on the seventh day and, um, and he was pleased with all that he had created in the prior six days with his crowning image of man. God was pleased to create man, and the scripture tells us that he created us, or man, in his own image. Adam and Eve, God created them to be like him, created us to be like him. God gave man the authority and dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. What a privilege and a responsibility man was given by God. In so many words, he was to rule the earth under God's direction. God created male and female, blessed them, and told them to be fruitful and multiply, replenish, and subdue it. In other words, bring the earth under control. That was man's responsibility. We, mankind uh, alone in God's creation, have more freedom and will. Only we are capable of thinking about and knowing God. Like him, we are a unity of being, body, soul, and spirit. We have reason, we have emotions, and creative ability. The possibilities for comparison are numerous. And in Adam and Eve, organized, unfallen state, Mankind reflected the righteousness and morality of God. God bestowed a special honor unto human beings, which he did not confer unto the rest of his creation. Man is like God. The image of God was corrupted by sin. Jesus Christ is the best example of reflecting the true image of God. Jesus desires that we become one with him and the Father. After God created man, he planted a garden and placed him into it to live and to dress it. There was all types of fruit trees for him to eat from. God had even placed the tree of life in the midst of a garden as well. But of the tree of good and evil, God told Adam that he shall not eat of it. For in the day that he eats thereof, he would surely die. But he could, but he could eat freely from the other trees. That didn't sound like a bad deal, right? I mean, 
he, he's in a garden that he didn't plant, God planted it. He's got ri three rivers in the garden. He's got all types of fruit and herbs that he can eat. And the only thing he says, don't eat of this tree of good and evil, that's, that doesn't seem like a hard command to keep. And, but if you do eat of it, you're going to die. Boy, I, you, know, you know, it's like, son, daughter, don't touch that stove. It's hot. But if you do touch it, you're going to get burnt. So I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm my own person. I'm going to go touch that hot stove, and you're going to get burnt. So it, wasn't, it shouldn't have been a hard command to follow. After Adam named the animals, here's Adam. He, at this point, is by himself. He's in the garden. He's naming the animals. Whatever name he gave to the animals is what they were called. God saw that it wasn't good for Adam to be alone. So he put Adam to sleep, took a rib from his side. Brothers, he didn't take a bone from his foot. He didn't take a bone from his head. But he took a rib, which is at our side, for his Help me, help, help man do his job that God assigned to him. So he was, she was to be a, alongside him, not to be trampled on or kicked, and not to be boss, but to work together in the earth. He said, replenish it, you know, uh, and you're supposed to subdue it, bring it under control. God gave man, and, and he had authority over the fish, of the sea over the birds of the air and then the animals and the beasts on the land. That's a unique position to be in, brothers and sisters. And Adam realized once God, he woke up, God put him to sleep, he seen this, again, I'm talking to the brothers, this beautiful person of being. I would go to say it was love at first sight. So brothers, when you found your mate, your wife, was it love at first sight? Yes, it was. Okay. <laughs> All right. We got, we got one brother saying it was. And you as a man pursued that love at first sight person, that being. You wanted that person, and God allowed you to achieve that goal. When Adam saw Eve, he says, now she's bone of my bone and flesh of myself, of my flesh. And he, he, he don't like me to say the Coca-Cola ball shape. You know, she had a beautiful shape. And he was pleased with her. And he desired her, and he began to love her probably more than anything. He loved his wife, and I believe that she loved him in return. Everything was going fine with Adam and Eve. And in keeping up with their responsibilities upon the earth. For an undefined period of time, the Bible doesn't say how long, but there was some period of time that things went good. Until Satan decided to disrupt God's creation. He hates God. And he wanted to, he saw what God had done, and he wanted to put a, a wrench into the gears. He wanted to throw uh, something into it to stop man. Keep in mind, God is a spirit. And we must worship him in spirit and in truth. If you lose his spirit, how can you worship him? How can you approach God? Because we have to worship him in spirit and truth. Not falsehood, but in truth. Satan went for the juggler vein. He could have approached Adam, but he knew that Adam was, gonna, was not going to turn his back on God. God said, stay away from this tree, and he was going to stay away from it. 
Now, Eve wasn't there when God gave the commandment. And I believe that Adam told Eve about the tree. The reason I say this, as you read further on, you'll find the scripture and, and her conversation with the servant. The devil was inside this, uh, inside this servant and he was talking to Eve. And he, and he pointed out to her, look at this tree here. Isn't it nice? And she looked at it and she saw, wow, that looks like the fruit on it looks like something that I'd like to eat. She started desire after it. And then she said, oh, but we cannot touch it nor eat of it. Otherwise, you will die. Now, who told her that you couldn't touch it? It had to be Adam. Because God told Adam, in the day you eat of this, he didn't say anything about touching. So I believe that Adam told her what God told him. And like we as parents, we put that little extra step in, don't touch it, Eve, you know, because you'll die. Satan probably used that to cause Eve, look at the tree. And since he's not supposed to touch it, the servant probably touched the tree. He said, look, I didn't die. So she touched it and she didn't die. He probably ate some of the fruit and he didn't die. So he deceived Eve into believing that God was trying to hold her down, her and Adam down, and keep him, them from being like him. But God had already created them in his image. And now Satan comes in the picture and puts doubt in their mind whether or not God created them or created them in his image. He's trying to hold you back. Have everybody ever told you that? Somebody's trying to hold you back and you could get here, but they won't let you get there. And, and so you began to turn and look at that individual in a different way. So Eve took the critical step and ate of the tree. Then she says, well, I'm Adam's helpmate. I'm going to go give him some. Adam had to make a decision. I know what God said. In the day you eat of this, you're going to die. He knew his wife was going to die. But I suggest, the Bible doesn't say this, this is me talking now, that Adam had the Romeo and Juliet, uh, Juliet syndrome. She's dying, I'm going to die with her. God is said he was going to kill us. We're going to have death if we eat of this. So what Adam did, he cho chose his wife over God. Over being obedient to God, he loved his wife more than he loved God. And I think Jesus told us that you can't love these more than you love me. You can't love your wife. You can't love your um, friends, cars, houses, whatever. God has to be number one in your life. If he's one, number one, then everything comes a distant second to God. So Adam chose his wife over God. He fell from grace. By falling for grace, from grace, a lot of the, the, the true image of God was tarnished and affected. What happened is he died spiritually right away. He had no connection with God anymore spiritually. His physical body began to die. But it took some time. I think Adam lived uh, 800 and some years old. And one scripture tells us that a day with the Lord is as a thousand years. And according to scripture, no one has ever lived a thousand years. The longest man on the earth was Methuselah. He lived 969 years. He didn't quite make a day. So God said in the day that you sin, that's the day you're going to die. Adam's disobedience began to grow through his seed. And that seed 
it just grew worse and worse, not better, worse and worse, till God regretted that he made man. He made us in his image, or he, uh, he made our forefather and foremother in our image, Adam and Eve, and yet now he's, regret, he's regretting that he made him. Why? Because man has gone so deep in sin, and he's diverged from the true image of God. Keep this in mind. God had already prepared a means of escape. With his own arm, he bought salvation. Jesus Christ was born of a woman because the one that committed the sin have to pay the price. But the heavens and the earth were searched, and there was no one that was able to qualify. Why? Because we all came from Adam and Eve. All have that tainted blood, and we have the sentence of death on our lives. We couldn't pay the price. It took an innocent being. So God, the Holy Spirit, tells us uh, that the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary. And he impregnated Mary. Joseph thought Mary had gone out and did something that she shouldn't have done until Gabriel, God sent Gabriel, look, what is perceived of her is not done by man. God did this. There's not a problem. Don't be afraid to take her as your wife. And so Mary took, I mean, Joseph took Mary as his wife, but this had to be the key. He had to be fully man. He came from, uh, took Eve's egg, he fertilized the egg, and now Jesus is a man. He qualifies to pay the price of sin, and yet he's still divine. His father is God. And so Jesus not only came to die for our sins, but he came to suffer, and he did suffer. He went to the wilderness after he was baptized. He was showing us the way to escape death and to be reunited with God in his image. He was baptized by John. Then immediately he went into the desert to be tempted of the devil. If I go about two days without eating, Katrina can tell you, I'm ready to hurt somebody. I'm hungry. <laughs> 40 days and 40 nights, God, Jesus went without food or water. Scripture says afterward he was hungry. So you don't take me that long, but, I'm, but he was hungry. Satan came to Jesus at his weakest moment and said, you know, I got an idea. Why don't you, you know, there's no food around here in this wilderness. Command those stones be bread. I know you got the power. You're able to do it. Jesus says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but I, by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So he used scripture on Satan. Satan got a little smart. He said, if he uses scripture, I know the scripture too. So he took him to another spot. And he says, it is written. He said, cast yourself off of this pinnacle. Because it's written, the angel will take charge let you gash your foot against a stone. So why don't you go ahead and jump off and test God? See if he, he's going to stick to his word. And Jesus, yeah, he's right. The scripture says that. But he says, it's also written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So say, Jesus defeated him. Satan thought he had Jesus because he was using God's word. But Jesus turned around and used another spot in God's word and told him in so many words, get behind me. I'm holding on to my father. And then the last temptation, Satan took him to temple or someplace high, a mountain, and had him look over all of the area. And he said, uh, see all these kingdoms? I've got the power to give it to you. I only require one small thing, that you bow down and worship to me. <laughs> Jesus, uh, uh, thou shalt not worship any other, you know. Uh, God himself, I'm not quoting it per, per se, but it's it, him only shall we serve. So Jesus uh, defeated Satan 
And the scripture says he went away for a season. You know he's coming back. He does it with us. We defeat him, tell him get behind us, and we keep rolling. He says, oh, that didn't work. I think a good fisherman, I, I know there's some fishermen in the room. They know how to use different bait. Me, I'm not so much a good fisherman because I use night crawlers and they don't catch anything. After two hours, I'm going home. I'm done. But that good fisherman, they, they said, I use night crawlers. I'm not getting a bite. I'm going to use wax worms. Let me try something different. I'm going to use a spinner, throw it out, and then reel it in. That thing spins around, and the fish thinks it's uh, uh, something alive. So Satan comes back with a different bait. He didn't, he didn't, he, you defeated him on one, he's coming, you can believe that he's coming back with something different. So, it, but if he finds out your weakness, just like a boxer, if you got an eye cut, guess what that, that opposite boxer gonna do? He's gonna go after that cut. He's gonna keep going after what he knows that you have a problem with. So, say, so the best thing for us, to, only, to pray to God, I mean, you can let your friends know what your weakness is if you have one, but, be careful who you tell, because once Satan finds out about it, he's going he's gonna to go after you with that weakness. So we just think and praise God. Jesus was tested, he was tried, and he was put to death. Yeah. Satan thought that that was his plan. He didn't realize that God had planned this thing out. And while he was uh, uh, in the trials with... Uh, uh, the uh, uh, Pontius Pilate. He examined Jesus, he scourged him, and he says, I don't find any problem with him. I don't see any fault with this man. And he tried to set Jesus free. But the own, his own religious uh, group, the scribes and the Pharisees that hated Jesus, yes. they wanted him dead. When he went into, uh, you know, uh, when, when a person, back in Jewish law, when you committed a sin, you had to have two, at least two witnesses to put someone to death. One wouldn't do it. But if you had two, and the woman with the issue, uh, the woman, I think, pastor, someone preached on it the other week, the woman that brought, they were brought to Jesus, with uh, caught in adultery, they had a lot of witnesses there. But when Jesus confronted them, they all went away. So she didn't have any, they have any witness against her to put her to death. They were all gone. And so Jesus, they, uh, uh, scripture says during his trial, several people went up there to say, he said this, he said that. They couldn't get two of them to agree. So they couldn't put Jesus to death. And so the high priest said, are you the son of God? God's not going to deny who he is. We shouldn't deny that we are filled with the Holy Ghost, saved, and we're walking for him. I don't care who it is. Don't be afraid to tell who you are. You don't have to have a neon sign flashing saying, I'm saved, you know, the big heavy gold cross on. You don't have to do that. But if somebody says, oh, you saved, you filled with Jesus, tell them yes. Would you like what I got? I can tell you about this man. I'm a witness for what he's done for me. You can tell them. But what happened is they couldn't find, and then Jesus says, yes. And, and, and the, uh, the high priest says, what further need do we have of witnesses? Because all of them in the room heard him say he was the son of God. They said, that's blasphemy. But Jesus was telling the truth. And so for the truth, he went to the cross. But Jesus had planned to go to the cross. When his time wasn't right, he said, nah, my time is not right. It's not, I'm not ready yet. They tried it. They laid him up on the hill. They were going to push him off the cliff. And he walked right through the crowd. Why? Because his time wasn't ready. But when time was ready, Jesus was ready. He had prepared himself to go to the cross. He prepared himself to die and to show what he was going to do for us as mankind. Uh, uh, Pontius Pilate 
tried to set him free, he had a tradition every year that time to let someone go free. He, he, he chose someone that was a known criminal, murderer, seditious, and all this, and he put him against Jesus. I find no fault in Jesus. This man is condemned to death. You know what the religious group, the church did? They said, he said, what am I going to do? Who, shall I, who do you want me to let free? The murderer. Let him free. Well, what am I going to do with Jesus Christ? Crucify him. That is, I don't know how uh, he felt. Uh, Barabbas felt. But he should have been relieved. And he should have been thanking God. I was supposed to be dying. Now I'm set free. So this is what Jesus was symbolic. What he did was doing for us. To set us free from death that our forefather brought us into disobedience. And now we have an opportunity through Jesus Christ to live forevermore. While Jesus was on the cross dying and uh, the, the thieves accused Jesus. Uh, uh, and, and one of them saw the way Jesus was handling himself. And he, he was pricked in his spirit. And he said, wait a minute. I don't know what the, their names were, but he's like, hey, we deserve to be on here. Yeah. You know, we're, pay, we're we're getting just payment for what we've done, but this man has done nothing. He's not worthy of death. So he looked at Jesus and said, remember me uh, when you uh, get to your kingdom. He says, this day you'll be with me in paradise. Now, he didn't go through being baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost and all that. But God was in transition. He was making uh, this to be in place. So, and as a matter of fact, God can do what he want to do. Amen. At least I think he can. <laughs> and he will do what he want to do, <laughs> regardless of my objection. So he was making plans, but he said, you want to be with me in paradise today? Can't those that are listening, looking on the line, do you want to be with God in paradise today? Do you want to change your lifestyle and live a life that's pleasing to God? You can. You can change with God's help. You can be renewed. You can be brought into the proper relationship and alignment with God. So Jesus became the true image of God. And by his substitutionary death, he's allowed us to join in with him and become the true image of God. When someone does you wrong, you will forgive them. You can get to the point you will forgive them even if they don't ask for your forgiveness. Now, you're moving toward Jesus Christ when you get to that level. Because some things people do to you, you say, I'll never forgive them for that. But Jesus uh, said, overcome evil with good. And it's a two-sided coin because sometimes we are the offender. And we're, we're the offender. We want forgiveness once we realize what we've done. But a lot of times we're the one being offended. And so God has even included that in the Lord's Prayer, right? Father, forgive me as I forgive those who trespass against me. If I want forgiveness, but I'm not going to give forgiveness. That doesn't work in God's uh, kingdom. It work, might work in Satan's kingdom, but not in God's kingdom. We got to learn to forgive. We got to do this. And the true image of God is going to reflect him. And what is scripture in? Is it Galatians 5, 22? If you have the Spirit, if you've been reunited with the Spirit, he told, Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again of the water and of the Spirit. And if you're born again of the water and the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace, long-suffering, uh, gentleness, kindness, meekness, and tempers. Against such there is no law. The fruit of the Spirit will dominate your life if you have the Spirit in you. 
The spirit and the flesh war against each other. They are not compatible, just like light and darkness. It's, I see the lights on, there's not dark. But when you're in the dark, if you turn the light on, the, I don't know, you tell me, I don't know where it goes, but it can't stay when light comes, darkness flees. So, so when you got the spirit, and the spirit of God is dominating in your life, the evil can't dominate. If you're doing evil, then the spirit can't dominate. But we're spirit creatures, spirit beings, and we must worship him in spirit and truth. Therefore, God needs to have the preeminence in our life. God needs to be the master of our life. And when we, as we uh, direct ourselves, uh, our life, we, no, I shouldn't say that, as we live the life that God directs us in, we, the Spirit is going to come forth. And the Spirit will discern the Spirit, you know, the fruit of the Spirit, the gifts that God has given through the Spirit to the church. They are going to dominate, and they are going to, uh, you'll discern a heart that needs help. And not only that, you'll be motivated to do something about it if you can. Peter and John said, silver and gold have we none. I'd like to uh, keep giving you something every day, but we don't even have anything. But such as I have, I give unto you. He took the man by the hand, and the Holy Ghost caused strength to flow from him down to the man, to his legs. He pulled him up, and he started not only just come up, he started jumping up and down. He gave him the ability to walk and the ability to work and not uh, have to beg every day because if they gave him some finance that day, guess what? Tomorrow, somebody's going to have to give him something for tomorrow. But by him now being able to walk, he went in onto the church with Peter and John and he shouted and caused a ruckus there. Wasn't this the man we saw when we came in that's sitting by the wayside at the beautiful gate, uh, asking for alms? Now look at him. He's, he's jumping up and down. He's shouting. He's praising God. It, doesn't that happen when, when we have been burdened? I heard El Roebuck a couple weeks ago talk about, you know, he was on the streets and he was doing things that shouldn't be doing. Doing. But when he found Jesus, his whole attitude changed. He was ready now. He's, he's happy. God can make you happy. God can change your life around where you have a positive outlook on life. You have a smile on your face instead of a frown. You're looking for the good side. The glass is half full, not half empty. You're looking uh, to do, Lord, with your help, I hope to accomplish this today. I hope to do this today. And you will be able to accomplish it because God is with you. Yeah. The, the, Jesus sent his disciples out two by two. And, uh, and, and one of them said, we saw someone over doing stuff. And he says, should we forbid them? He says, is that, they're either for me or against me. So I'm, I'm not going to knock anybody that's working along with me. I, uh, but I may put a stop to someone that's working against me. And, and uh, David and all of them, he, they prayed that God will uh, not allow them to continue to do evil. So that's what I was saying about this affirmative action. Uh, that's systemic racism uh, when you do away with things like that. Uh, and so for being a slave for over 200 years, that is going up to the generations where if you uh, try to get a job, you could be qualified, but because you're the wrong race, you could be denied. That's what's been going on for years. And then Martin Luther King and, and Jesse Jackson, these guys, he had Operation Push, and one of the things, he would go to a corporation. He said, you have no blacks on your board of directors. You gotta, your state has X amount of population of blacks there. If you don't put somebody on your board or hire so many on your employment, we are going to boycott you. You know, black sp blacks spend billions of dollars every day. We spend the money we get, we go out and spend it. We keep the economy going. And if you can stop that, you stop that cycle, the businesses will be hurting. 
When Martin Luther King uh, was uh, advocating and, and what's the lady's name that, that, that uh, wouldn't give up her seat on the bus? Rosa Parks. They did the bus boycott. What gave that boycott strength is they started to lose revenues from the blacks spending their money. Now the blacks are getting get a ride someplace else and they're doing this other stuff. Those big corporations say, hey, we got to do something. Talk to the mayor. Hey, do something for these people because we can't stand it. We don't want to go out of business. So you have a lot of power if you come together as one. And Jesse Jackson uh, realized that. Martin Luther King realized that. And things were changed. So we just thank and praise God for his goodness. Um, I'm not going to keep, keep going, but the main point I wanted to make this morning is that the true image of God is in man, the man Jesus Christ. We can have what he has if we accept what he came to give us. If I, 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 I can't say it. I said, if I had pulled out $100 and I said, anybody want it? I'd probably get a flood trying, somebody might step on each other trying to get it. But I don't have it, so I can't do that for y'all this morning. But Jesus is like that. He's offering something that's more valuable than money. And we're turning deaf ears to what he said. I mean, if I was on, on death row and I wanted to be uh, uh, pardoned, and the governor says, all you have to do is say, will you pardon me? Will you pardon me, Governor? <laughs> I said more than once because I don't want to die. Most of us don't want to die. So we just second praise God for the true image of God. And like I said, I just did a cursory thing of it because it's a deep subject and I didn't really want to take too much more time to get into it. So I just thank and praise God for that. I would like to, uh, at this time, uh, make an altar call to those that don't know Jesus. Those that want to know Jesus, if you're uh, in sin and you don't know Jesus, I appeal to you to come. If you're at home, bow down on your knees and ask Jesus to save you. And then you're welcome to come to Rehoboth Temple and physically get baptized, filled with his Holy Spirit, and we will work with you to receive his Holy Spirit. Scripture tells us that we should repent, be born again of the water and the spirit, and we should be baptized, baptized in Jesus' name and be filled with the Holy Ghost. You, will, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost if you follow God's instruction. So we just thank and praise God for his goodness, for his mercy, and his grace. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. He has all power in his hand. He can heal you. He can save you. Also, I appeal to those that are sick in body or maybe having a mental situation. Come, let the elders anoint you with oil and lay hands upon you. And the prayer of the faith shall save the sick. Jesus, as the people are coming, we pray a special prayer for each and every one that made the step. We're praying for salvation, that you would save them, you would fill them with your precious Holy Spirit. Father, draw them to you. Father, let them realize that you are offering them eternal life and a life, Father, that may, may not be peaches and cream, but in the end, they'll receive eternal life. Father, we're praying for those that are sick, and those that are shut in, those that need your help, Father, we pray and we call on your name. For we know that you're able to do it, Father. You're able to save. You're able to deliver. Lord, help us this morning. For we need you, Lord. We can't make it without you, but with thee, all things are possible. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. 
We pray for Pastor Barry and his absence, Lord. We're praying for Lady Barry and all the saints, Father, those who are here. And Father, we thank you for the graduates this morning. We thank you, Father, for the, for the households and Father, those that are, uh, Lord Jesus, are struggling. Father, those that don't know which way to turn, we pray for your goodness and your mercy. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. If you are born in the image of God, in his likeness and created for his glory, I want you to give God a clap offering, your best clap offering. That's pitiful. I said if you are made in his image and in his likeness, come on church, we owe God. Hallelujah. He didn't have to do what he did, but he went to the cross despise the shame and now he's sitting on the right hand of God. I thank Ella Jackson for the word of the Lord and we're going to give God the glory that's due his name. I thank God for our music department everyone, the technicians and the nurses and ones that made this service what it is. How many enjoy church today? Alright, y'all ready to go eat? But God is good to us. I just need three people to stand up and give him a praise and we're going home. If you know that, you know. Don't leave this place the same way you came. Hallelujah. The devil tried to destroy us, but we got away. Thank God for the word with hands raised. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and dominion, both now and forevermore. And the whole church said, amen, amen. Continue to lift a pastor up in prayer as he do the work of the Lord. Tell your neighbor, I'm so glad you came.